folks, I'm Melly Little, and this is your daily TA wrap, where we take a look at these markets and we do it from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves, what happened today? And what does it tell us about tomorrow? I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of the snowy Rocky Mountains. Hello folks, I hope everyone's doing fine. I got a nice little chart here to share with you today. McClellan uh, put this out today, uh, November 21st. It's actually the best graph I've seen yet of the correlation over a long period of time between the Fed and the assets held by the Fed and the performance of the S&P 500. And so what's kind of fascinating, if you look at this, and this is available on our site. Um, you know, if you if you pop over to our site, uh, you can go into uh, uh, the tool section. You can find this. But uh, you know, we have a link back to them. I, I like their work. Uh, not, not so much their tools as much as their com commentary at times. But what what is interesting is if you look at this, right? We bottomed out down in here in terms of assets held. Started to increase those assets in 2009 market bottoms right right afterwards and it's been rising ever since every time we've had these little QE things where we we settle off and don't do the QE you know the market anticipates it sells off right we've seen it twice now and I suspect we're gonna see the same thing the next time it actually happens and I'm not sure when that's going to happen uh, maybe you know I don't know but I do know that it will happen at some point and uh, they'll take the punch ball away again and uh, we'll probably see some sort of a correction as a result of it. But it was kind of a fascinating piece. Uh, they got some good commentary here. And they also have some commentary about this little blip here where in 2007 they began to sell and they kept selling. They were taking money out of the banking system. They were selling off their treasuries. And they sold off about half of what they had at the time. It wasn't quite half. That's seven down to about five. So a good third of what they had. And you saw the crash that took place. And that's, I don't think I've seen that before. Matter of fact, there's a blow up of that down here. Where they blow up that piece of it. And you see how you go. And the numbers look a little, there's the number, 700. So they were about 700, almost 800 and they sold down to about four, 480 or so in terms of assets held by the Fed. And the market crashed as a result. So interesting piece. Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it tells us other than that there really is a correlation. And that correlation is uh, definitely felt here. Free tools, market breadth, McKellen oscillator is where it's at. Well, let's go to the markets today. We've got some uh, interesting... Uh, effects today um, in particular uh, this market just uh, did its thing <laughs> as soon as you think it might try to sell off well that's the wrong thought because it never really sells off anymore at least at this uh, particular period of time if we think about it from the perspective of um, the timing calendar wise uh, it's gonna be hard to sell this thing off into the end of the year we had the industrials up 109 points, over 16,000, clothes above it, 16,010 uh, roughly. S&Ps tacked on 14 and a half, 1795, almost 1796. They're going after 1800, and I suspect they're going to push into it tomorrow. The composite, 47, almost 48 higher, 3969. We had the NDX 35 and a half higher, 3402 and a three quarters. The leader today was that laggard, Russell, 19, almost 20 points higher, 11,019 and a half. Gold sold down some more today. Oil had a nice rally today. Uh, the dollar was uh, pretty much flat. Uh, and uh, the bonds, I think the bonds were down today. I guess they're up a little bit after hours. Um, let's look at the charts. So last night when I was looking at just the indexes themselves, what it appeared to me that we had was um, a situation where 
uh, the indexes, we're going to try to get back a little deeper, uh, back into the swing point high. Remember, we had the NDX that had already uh, failed on a retest regen. We had the NASDAQ doing the retest regen. That didn't apply to the IWO and the Russell, and it didn't apply to the Dow. And the S&Ps were trying to get back into it uh, to actually do the test. Not to be. Flips around, volume expands slightly, you're going back after the highs. Uh, the big bar down, well, it really wasn't a big bar down here, so we've got them elsewhere, uh, but it flipped around. And if you remember last night, when I looked at the indexes, I was kind of mixed thinking we could get a full, uh, you know, not a full retest, but a, a retest back into swing point high. But um, the, the thing that was interesting and, and that I talked about was the fact that we didn't have, uh, well, we didn't have the sectors telling us that that was the case. And what we've talked about before and we, what we expected would probably happen is that, or at least my thought and the one I've been advertising for some time now, is that what we do or what we would see would be some sort of an ABCD structure let me get my coloring right here. Uh, bear with me a second. And I gotta get my coloring right so I can draw. What we thought would happen, here we go, is an ABCD structure inside of the larger ABCD structure that's already in place, right? And so that, tonight, that definitely looks like what is playing out. And that was, um, for better or for worse, that was what we thought could take place, and now that uh, now that we're actually seeing it takes place, um, it just confirms, right? Uh, let's let's go. Let's pop over. I think the Dow's actually at new highs already. Um, no, the Dow didn't get updated. My chart didn't get updated here. Don't know what happened there. Let's go to the. Let's go to the. We can pop over and look at it over here though. So industrials. So yeah, it's a new time haul time I close. That top was 1630. We're at 1609, 1610 roughly, 20 points away. Um, I don't know how we'll not tag that tomorrow. I it's a Friday, right? You've got another week of basically um, flat for the most part, slightly up. It's going to be hard to bring it down tomorrow. And there's no news really to bring it down unless some sort of Fed speak comes out to bring it down. What, what you're setting, what you're starting to see set up, even on these weaker sectors, and we'll see it clearly on the Russell, is that same thing. Right? We're getting, yeah, in this case it's from here, and we're getting another ABCD structure in place that would take the NASDAQ right up to the same sort of an idea right take it up to and actually that one has to come back a little bit deeper because of the uh, the retrace here was deeper so if we take and pull that back a little bit farther but you've got the same sort of idea right because here it came back deeper same sort of idea right take it up and then you'll probably see some sort of a hesitation and another one to take it up and finish it out if you remember, when we were looking at this uh, about a week and a half ago, we were talking about an ABC structure um, that would take us to about 4 or 5% higher. Uh, I actually did a, um, an article on that that was written, uh, let me pop in here, I think that was written back on uh, last week. Yeah, there was, there was two articles. This was the one I'm talking about. Index breakouts leading eye-popping projections. It was a Market Watch article. And essentially in that article I was talking about uh, more than likely the projections that were in place due to the breakouts that were taking place uh, would take us up to 4 to 5% higher. And right now that is in fact looking as if that's what's going to happen. The one we want to focus on tonight, though, is the one that's been a laggard for a while, and that's the Russell. So the Russell today just took off, right? This thing has been, this thing has not been able to put in a higher high, right? Whereas everything else already had, and it still hasn't, 
but you can see tonight, and I didn't draw those in very clean, but you can see tonight that in fact you're getting the breakout uh, over that 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 high that was in there from about three days back, right? It's 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 right at it tonight. If it gets over this, which it does appear that is going to volumes okay, then it's going to attack these highs. And if the Russell attacks the highs, it has the exact same setup, folks. ABC structure up inside. In this case, it's not as dynamic because it was a deeper pullback, uh, but a, an ABC structure that takes it up. Three and a half, four and a half percent higher as well. Okay, let's go look at the sectors and see if the sectors are echoing last night. They were, they were the ones that told us that we'd probably get the push higher. Uh, let's see what they look like. Okay, so IYT and none of these were coming back hard. Really, nothing here on the bounce. That one doesn't give us anything just came back into a support area and held. The semis today were a big move, no volume though. That's still not a good sign. So the semis uh, may or may not help. And then we go to materials and the basic materials with the dollar strengthening, they're having trouble. They got no volume on the push here, but they did they did come off of what was support, turned into resistance, now will be support again. And that also, you know, all of these look the same to me when I look at them. They all look like ABCD structures, right? They all pull back. They all have the ABCD pattern in place. I don't use very much in the way of projections. I, I really use two patterns, right? I, I look at the ABCD structures that you see me talking about, and I look at ranges, and I say, okay, what's the range? Okay, what's a doubling of that range? and those give you projections as well. Other than that, I really don't have any kind of tools that I go to to give me projections. The most powerful tool to me is the ABCD structures. Why? Because the ABCD structures, if you really think about it, they play off of the retest regens very well. You know, for example, if I'm sitting here looking at this particular structure, right, and I see in this case I'm trying to find the AB so the A is there the B is there here's your B what does that do well it usually comes back into a retest regen and then you can see it clearly here that's what it did right um, the retest regen was right back to this area and so one of the reasons I find the ABCD structures very powerful is because they fit into the neoclassical concepts right that was a retest regen it's a clear retest regen off of this swing point high, the width of that bar, you can see it retested right to the bottom of it. And that gives you the pullback. You're looking for that retest regen to bounce. In other words, can it regenerate higher? If it does, then what happens? You get the ABCD structure. That is why I, you see me talk about it all the time. That's why I talk about it because it fits it fits neoclassical and it's a great tool for projections and you know if there's good tools out there you don't reinvent them um, the tools I invented was because there were tools out there the ones that are out there there's a couple that I use uh, over and over that fit in and that's one of them let's look at the rest of these XLE Okay, this one's really struggling, but it's also got an ABCD structure as well. You know, let's measure some of these and see what they look like. So that's uh, 85, 52, top of it is uh, 88, it's two bucks, two and a half bucks, 88, 90. So 88, 90 takes you up, um, you know, up into this area. So it's, it's a decent structure. If I take the larger structure, they're going to be much different. So this one's 81 up to 87 so that's about seven and a half and it takes you to 92 so you can see the ABCD structures and that's true of all of them the ABCD structures are going to get you part of the way to the to the objective and then we're probably going to see a more pullback and then we're probably going to see another ABCD structure set up 
the powerful ones, XLF. This is where all the power was today. This is what was moving everything. Now this one actually has a more dynamic structure in place. And that structure is from here. Let's, let's do the numbers. I think it was 21. Uh, taking us up to 22. Yeah, this was 22. And then the larger one was 1948 to 21. So that's a buck and a half. Uh, taking us up to 2188. So we've got two. These, this is the one that's going to play out and be the one to watch. Because when it, when it, if it does play out to the expectation, right, this takes you up to roughly 22, 2188. And then the one that's in place now is from here. This one takes you up just past that takes you up just over at 22. So that area is going to be the area to watch as this thing strolls on up there. And right now, this is carrying everything. And the way these things usually work is the strongest one will get up there and hang, right? It will just get up here and hang and hang while the others catch up and finish off their ABCD structures. And so I expect the XLF, if it gets up there and starts hanging at that price point, that's probably going to be the indication that the others are going to catch up and then we're going to get a pullback. Let's see what the XLI, this one's also been very strong. And this one's starting to set up another ABCD structure on the way up. 99.95. And this one wouldn't even give a pullback. Yeah, there's no, it's not even a pullback there. This one never even gave a good one. The only one that's in place here is these two. So the numbers here are kind of mind boggling. 47.83, that's two bucks onto this. It takes it to 51.40. XLK. Okay, so XLK was struggling today. Apple struggled again today. It couldn't get going until late in the day. Uh, but again, here, ABCD structures, they all look the same. I don't see anything in any of them that worry me. Uh, the only ones that are, are more interesting is like the semis still haven't really caught fire and had any volume expansion. Of course, it doesn't matter until you get to a point where it matters. So you like to see money come into them, but they're not. This one also looks the same, XLP. So XLP was nice. It came back into the big bar area, right? Volume tails off. This one was down today, it couldn't get going. It's got a little bit of a doji kind of thing going here. What is that, 42.73, didn't get to a low, it's an inside day. That looks to be trying to turn ABCD structure two. XLU, the one I don't know why I look at. Still don't know why I look at it. Let's go to the healthcare. Healthcare was extremely strong. Yeah, and look at this one, this one's powering up. Now, it did a doji today, so it may hesitate here, but the ABCD structure on this one's pretty strong. 2052.36. That's about two bucks onto this. Uh, it gets you up to 55, almost $56. And today it's at 54, another buck and a half. And XLY. It looks like the transports, ABCD structure, but nothing big. Okay, let me go look at the ox markets. Um, in particular, I want to look at the dollar and the euro. So the dollar, remember yesterday, dollar had no volume. Still has no volume. It's doing a doji, almost like a little failure there at the highs. 2185. So that could be a pullback. Let me see what the FXE did, because the FXE had volume coming off. And that's a doji inside. One thirty three. One thirty three twenty to thirty two ninety three. Well, uh, you know, the, these things could try to work a little bit higher, but the, the pattern here, the way this one looks to me, 
is that it failed to get higher even though it bounced. Uh, I expect this to actually come on back down. Uh, gold continued to sell off today, or actually it went flat today, it didn't do anything. Well, that's interesting, got a little doji. 1976, yeah, it closed over it too. So gold, like usual, so you know this is this is a painful trade if you're trading it flat you know by itself but it's going to try to come back into the retest regen zone it looks like given the pattern tonight and that would take you back up here to try to retest and regenerate lower so there's ABCD structures in place and actually it looks like it's already played out yeah it does it's about the same length it actually it looks like it's played out already so yeah bounce back up in here and see if it can regenerate lower. One of these days gold's going to find itself and and actually take off, but so far not the case. Oil finally bounced. Um, this is one I've been interested in for a long time. The problem today though is you have two bars it was coming back into. It came right back into them. Volume's not there. The bars you're coming into are this one and this one right and you can see the volume here and the volume there versus the volume into this this thing's going to come back down try one more time and then potentially get its run trying to put in a bottom the problem here to me is you don't see any real buyers coming into it yet so from that perspective oil isn't something to be long it's still something to look at from the short side uh, the, pro the, the difficulty is getting a good trade on from the short side. What you'd really like to see if you're going to get a trade on this guy is uh, you, you want to see it come back into this area, you know, at least up into here. And so far it hasn't been able to get there. We'll see if it can get there or not. All right, those are the main ones I wanted to look at. Let me go look one quick time at the bonds. I want to start with, uh, I want to look at three of them. I want to look at the municipals. These still can't lift. That's interesting. How about the junk bonds? And then uh, we'll look at the TLT as well. The junk bonds trying to put an ABCD structure in place. They haven't got it going yet, but it looks like that's what they're going to try to do. All right, so this is the TLT. So we tested underneath and broke. Okay, we're going to have to expand the chart back to the weekly. So this bar on the weekly is the September 16th bar, 102.85 is the low. We're at 102.95. And volume so far is 30 versus 56. So there's no way the volume is going to be there, right, to break this thing out. So th that suggests to me that we're gonna get we're gonna have this thing hold here, and the bonds in fact are gonna lift again. That's the big bar, and you don't have the volume. It's not wide price spread. Your wide price spread was over here, but it's coming into that little zone in this area. That looks to me like this thing is gonna hold, even though it's got the ABCD down. So. What, what has to happen is, you know, to, to give you the trade, right, if you're interested in it, is it has to take out this swing point low. This is the retest regen area. Again, you know, I always come back to this, but that's what you're, that's what you're interested in. It has to stay below this to keep going. If it doesn't, if it gets back over it, then the weekly is taking effect and you're actually going to get the range and the range trade, of course, is all this. So that would give you a trade, a nice trade, actually. All right, let's uh, let's pop in and answer some of your questions. Uh, well, let me see what do we got here. NSPH, nanosphere. I saw actually a, um, you know, we do one one of the things we have for members um, is this trading signals. And trading signals tries to take the um, the concepts from trend trading setups and put those into practice. And it's not so much it tries to do it; that's what it does. 
And what it does is it scans all the charts and looks to see that in, the, and in that book there's a checklist of about 10 items, nine or 10 items depending on what the, you know, what the case is, the type of uh, trade it is. And it takes those and tries to say, you know, what, you know, the checklist is, okay, of those nine or 10, you need 70% of them to pass. And if you, or excuse me, 80%. If you don't have 80% of them, then, then it's not the great trade, right? It doesn't have the potential to be a great high probability success rate on the trade. Nanosphere, one, there was another one that, that showed up about, I don't know, it was about a week and a half, two weeks ago. I'd have to go back and look at it uh, because we archived those now. And um, it was one of, one, of the, one of the ones in that sector. So it, it's kind of interesting to see someone asking about another one. Let's look at the chart and see what it looks like, though. So you're wanting a buy point on this. Uh, and are you interested, what, intermediate term time frame? What's your interest? Or is it short term time frame? Because it's coming back in to do a retest regen right now. I don't know if that's what you're looking at. Okay, so the breakout bar 2.2, you came back with 1.5, you tested with nothing. Wow, okay, so if you're thinking short term, there's a trade. Intermediate term, I probably wouldn't be interested in it. The trade short term is, is probably pretty obvious here. And, and that is is that you have an ABCD structure potential in place, right? You could get a nice ABCD structure. The problem is is that I don't think that's what you're going to get. And the reason for that is because if you look over here, you have huge resistance. Now, I guess I'd have to do the numbers on that to see if it adds up. Let's see, what is the top of that? 207 and 181 it's about 40-50 cents onto this yeah it gets you to 160 something so yeah it, yeah it could work so the ABCD structure could work here get you up to about a buck 60 which is just underneath this the, the, the huge issue here is these two bars it's it's two things actually it's it's the zone created here which is tremendously difficult to get through I just don't think you're gonna get through here and then in the other issue is um, is anytime I see this I'm fairly disinterested in in playing it on that time frame so yeah, you could get an ABCD structure here and you could play it on a short term basis. It's not something I'd hang around in though. Let's see what the other one is uh, real quick. So what's the other one here? QLTI. So QLTI is, um, okay, this is another one that has the same sort of issue. You had two big volume spurts. So yeah, again, you can trade this and a, and a lot of times, I don't know what happened back here, but a lot of times uh, these things will work their way back, all the way back up before they fell again. Um, didn't fell with that much volume, volume coming back into it. The difficulty here is you need it to trade down some because you you, you got to put your stop underneath here. 518, no, excuse me, 463. And even though you're gunning for a retest regen off of this low, that low is eight. You're already at five, so that's three. And your risk is 463. Yeah, so you're risking 50 cents to try to get through. I don't know. You might be able to trade it. Um, I think you'll get a little bit of a pullback. You can trade it in here somewhere. You know, you can buy it in here somewhere in this area. You know, somewhere in this area. Let's look intraday real quick before I, sh before I go. So that's QLTI, QLTI. And pull it on an intraday. 
So your gap up is here. The big volume all came in on one bar. So this doesn't trade a lot of volume, does it? 1.1 on these, but but other days it's trading 100,000. So real quickly here, let me see. So the bar is... Yeah, I would look for it back down around there, about five bucks. See if you can get it around five. If you can get around five, then you put your stop under this wide price bird bar. That's how I trade it. Okay, folks, um, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, the nothing but up market continues to go up and uh, looks to me like we're going to test the highs again tomorrow. Probably try to close them out that way given it's Friday. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. Until next time, take care. Good night, folks.